Hi, this is Ezra Wolf, and I'm going to show you the new course creation process in the latest release of Ethos CE. We have added a course creation wizard, we have added reminders, we have added credit expiration, a number of new features that may be of interest to you, so I'm going to go through those now. To start with, we're looking at the course creation wizard, and we have both an expert mode for those of you that know exactly what you want to do and do it as fast as possible, and we have a wizard mode that makes it a little uh, more step-oriented process. The top of the wizard mode you can see the sections. Um, the gray sections I have not uh, reached yet. This light green section I am working on right now and it turns dark green when it's complete. On the left we have tabs for all the different areas of each section. So to start with I enter the course title. I'm going to go ahead and put in a program description, target audience field, um, paste in my learning objectives, and at the end of this tab um, there's a button that says next tab so what's happening is I'm going right to the place that I need to go as soon as I click that button um, it's taking me through these tabs on the left side here we have the start and expiration date for the course so these are the dates in which anyone can come in enroll and claim credit if there is credit available for this course if the course is a live event I check the live event box and what I get here is a date for the event itself. So if it is a meeting at 8 p.m. on Thursday the 25th, I'm going to go ahead and put that in here along with a location. Um, for now I'm just going to turn that off as this is not a live event. And I'm going to click Next tab. Here's the Faculty and Credentials field as well as a link to Disclosures if I wanted to put one of those in. Um, I can set the course format. I can give instructions specific to this course if there's something that is special about this course you want your users to do. I can set prerequisites. Um, these are links to other courses in the system that users would have to complete before they got this one. Here's the required hardware so software field. And now I've completed that section. It's going to save all that data and what's going to happen is at the top the next arrow is going to light up. Here's where I am. Um, and I get another set of tabs. So to start with, um, there's nothing really I want to change on my course settings tab. But the next tab has the course credit settings, and we made a number of changes and improvements to this. Um, we've organized these into um, nice little uh, fields that um, collapse and um, expose when you click on them. As many of our uh, clients have had quite a few credit types, and this makes it easier to manage. I can turn on the credit type, set the increments for claiming as well as the minimum and maximum, and um, the checkbox for variable credit is claimed here. The variable credit is set here and there's now a drop down for expiration type. So expiration type would be used for managing a certification that would expire after a number of days, years, months, however you want to set it. We can set the expiration type based on a specific day, so if it always expires on the same day we just specify that day here. We can set it to expire the end of the year the credit is awarded, so if it's only good for that calendar year. Um, and we can also set an offset of additional days, so it could be good for that year plus 30 days, or that year plus 365 days. And then finally we can set it for the date the credit is awarded plus an offset. So if it's only good for 30 days from the day it's awarded, or a year from the day it's awarded, um, you would set that here. And of course the default is none, so the credit doesn't expire unless you set it to. Um, we can set a certificate template for this course um, rather than using the global defaults. Um, we now have the ability to restrict signups to certain roles, so when you set up your site you can create as many roles as you want, and when you create a course you can limit the users who are allowed to enroll in that course to the roles that you specify. By default everybody can enroll in it. And then finally here on this last tab is the uh, new improved course reminders section. So we can add as many reminders as we want per each course and we can set an offset, we can set the reminder um, a number of days before or after, um, we can also allow this to be weeks or um, actually minutes um, after an event happens. So if you want somebody to get a um, welcome message after they have enrolled. If you want to get somebody a reminder a week before the course expires, you can do that. We can also trigger it based on the event date, um, a, any date that you specify, and then once the course has the learning objects like quizzes and evaluations in it, the reminders can be triggered off the completion of those objects. So if you wanted to do a follow-up evaluation 
30 days after a quiz was completed, 30 days after a certificate was awarded, you could do that here. And so now I'm going to move on. The next section is the custom section, which when your site is set up, if you have any custom fields, they go in here. Um, this is a, a clean install, so there's no custom fields there. We also have the pricing section where if you're selling your courses, you can set the, the price for them. Um, you can set a price per role. You can make adjustments for um, certain kinds of um, users um, that might not have a role as well. I'm going to skip this whole section. And then the last section is the publishing section. And so at this point, the course has not been published. And you can keep it in this state for as long as you want um, until you're ready to publish it. Um, you can also do things here like set a, a path. Um, if, so if you want to have a sp specific URL that you're using for your course, um, you can set that here. By default, it's going to pick up the title of your course that you, that you gave it, but you can set that as well. Um, and so when I'm done, I hit Finish and Publish, and now that course is saved um, and ready to have course objects added. Now, just to show you the difference between that and the um, expert mode, I'm going to go ahead um, click back into the course and switch it over to expert mode so you can see the difference. Here's the expert mode switch at the top right. I click that and what's going to happen is I'm going to get all the fields on one page. So if I know exactly where I want to go, I'm only touching a few of these, I don't have to tab through all of those um, sections that we did before. So um, depending upon what kind of user you are, you may go ahead and, and use the expert mode all the time or you may prefer the wizard. I think um, it's a great option to have both. And that is the course creation wizard in Ethos CE 6.3.3.